All right guys, so I get asked all the time what you're allowed to take on an airplane with you as a barber if you're traveling, whether that be for house calls or to different hair shows or things like that. So looking for you guys today, I'm gonna be packing my bag to go to my Joshua P class in Tampa, Florida. I'm gonna show you guys what I take with me, but also explain to you guys some of the rules for TSA and flying through the airport with our barber tools. Now before we get into it, I wanna show you guys some of the bags that I have. I also have videos on all these bags if you guys want any more information and we'll figure out which bag we're gonna take to Tampa. First off guys, one of the first bags that that I got. This is the BAP, the Barber Assault Pack from Barbaric Style. Basically just your normal backpack. It does have some attachments on the front where you guys can attach things. Just like a military bag, you guys can take these Velcros off and attach other accessories and different pouches and whatnot so you guys can store more stuff in the bag. But basically a regular size backpack with a lot of different compartments for you guys to put your clippers, trimmers, scissors, all of that good stuff to take with you on the road. So like I said guys, I do have a video on this. If you guys want to look it up, just look up the Barbaric Style BAP Barber Assault Pack and you guys will find the video on my channel. Next up guys, I have a bunch of bags from GMB. This is my full size GMB bag. You guys can see I got a bunch of custom pouches on the top. Fort Worth Barber Supply, 245, Sean Guts Hair, GMB Pro. This is one of the bigger bags that I have guys. So when I have to take everything that I have on the road, my entire station pretty much, I grab my full size GMB bag. Now guys, I do have the big travel suitcase pack from GMB, but honestly I haven't really used it yet. It is too big. It's a lot of space for me. I don't really need that much space, but literally I could probably fit my whole station in that. I also have the over-the-shoulder clutch bag. It is convenient, it's called clutch, but this is the clutch over-the-shoulder bag from GMB. It is basically the bottom compartment of the big bag in this, so you can put your clippers, trimmers, then you have the top pouch. You can throw some scissors and a few small things. This would obviously be for just a small kit to go do a house call or something like that. Last but not least, guys, this is my Babyliss bag. This is the bag that I got most recently. Similar to the Barbaric Style bag, just a backpack, regular old standard size backpack. Awesome setup in this, though. If you guys wanna check it out, definitely check that video out, and this is what we're gonna be taking to Tampa. So it has kind of a medium size storage. So kind of perfect for our trip. I'm not going to take everything that I have. We're going to be able to load everything I need into here and take it to Tampa with us. And guys, of course, I do have discount codes for GMB and Babelish. You guys can save 10% on any of those bags. All right, guys, so I'm going to start packing this thing up. And as we go, I will explain to you guys some of the TSA rules. For those of you who don't know, TSA is basically who's in charge of the rules of what you can take through the airport. That is who you have to go through the security checkpoints to make sure you don't have anything crazy on you. So I want to make sure you guys know the rules. There's not really that many, so let's start packing it up and I'll explain them as we go. Now first off guys, let's get this pouch out of the bag. And the first thing we're gonna grab is my custom FX. So guys, there are not really any rules when it comes to hair clippers. I believe any clipper is allowed. I looked up the rules earlier and I did not see anything about hair clippers. So basically on the website, the way it is displayed, it will say hair clippers, it will say checked bag, carry on bag, and then it will have yes or no next to it. So double yes on this, you guys can check it in your bag or you can take it on the airplane with you. Obviously guys, these aren't really sharp. We have a blade that's sharp underneath. We're not really accessible, nothing dangerous about taking your clippers. So no question here, you guys can take 100 clippers if you want without any issues. So we will throw this in the Babeless bag, Babeless clippers in the Babeless bag. So we'll do that. We'll go ahead and take our skeleton. Obviously guys, when I talked about clippers, same goes for trimmers, they're totally safe. You guys can take them as well. Go ahead and throw in my slim line. You guys know I gotta use this for balding out, so I do take it on the road with me all the time. I forgot I have the bag packed a little bit special to fit each of my clippers. So we will take the boosted and the saber. Again, guys, no rules on these clippers. We can just throw them straight in. I don't know where I had the saber. We'll throw it right there. Go ahead and flip those a little bit. That slot's a little bit bigger. I did make this uh, a little bit more set up to fit specific things, if you guys can pay attention. It's longer here, can fit the FX, two clipper slots. These things do Velcro move around. So guys, we will take the baby the shaver. Again, when I talk about clippers, clippers, trimmers, shavers, all of them are allowed. This is a shaver, obviously, so this is allowed, no problem. We will throw it, uh, that's kind of a big slot. We'll throw it right there, and we will take the TPOB shaver. We'll throw it right there. All right, guys, so as far as what I put in that pouch, I think that's about it. I'm gonna find a spot for my combs and brushes, and uh, I guess it goes without saying, guys, obviously nothing dangerous about a brush or any of these combs. They're just plastic, nothing dangerous, so these are absolutely allowed to take on the airplane or in your check bag. So we'll throw these in a spot. I'm actually gonna wait, and we're gonna put them in this top pouch. So I don't remember what I had this big slot for. I think I threw some guards in there, so we will just throw one through four I like to take. That's uh, obviously half, one, two, three, four. Go ahead and throw those. Uh, one and a half, two. We'll go ahead and throw those in that slot. We got a good spot there. I haven't packed this bag in a while, so that's all I'm gonna put in there, guys. We'll go ahead and put this back in. Let me figure out how it goes. Yeah, so it goes down here at the bottom. There's a little bit of Velcro. You can put that tab in there and then put this on the top. If you guys remember, if you saw my Babyliss video, the blow dryer, my favorite thing about this bag is there is a nice spot for the blow dryer. You 
guys can take this Velcro strap right here, slide your blow dryer in, just un-Velcro this. Let's see how this works here. Yeah, you guys pull it all the way tight. You can secure it. Now you see the blow dryer is held in. I will just take my cord, go ahead and just loop that around in here. And you guys see that's actually one of the worst things about some of the other travel bags. There's not really a good spot for a blow dryer. So you can see blow dryer is in. We can go ahead and throw a cape in. We'll take my illusion cape. Go ahead and fold this thing up real quick. There we go. We'll just go ahead and kind of slide this in. We'll just put it on top. That'll work just fine. All right, while I got this tab open, guys, I'm going to put my diffusers in here just while I have some room. We'll just kind of throw them in there. Plenty of room. A couple big things that are safe, like a neck duster. Nothing's going to happen to that. It's not going to break. And guys, everything that we just put in, the blow dryer, the diffuser, the nozzles, all of that, those are obviously safe, guys. Again, think of it as anything that can hurt somebody, things that are like explosives, different things like that, and things that are sharp, obviously. So our scissors we'll get to in a minute, and I'll explain that to you. But blow dryer, cape, neck duster, all of that stuff is safe. Go ahead and close this thing up. I'm gonna zip it up. And we will start with this top pouch right here. Now guys, when I take this bag, I take it all the way through the airport. So I put my keys and things in the front so that I don't have to go through TSA with them. Now this slot right here, guys, I like for my scissors. Now let's talk about scissors for a second, guys. Obviously these are probably the most dangerous thing that we have on our station. And obviously we need to take them with us. So let me tell you guys the rules about scissors. Guys, this is the pivot point, obviously where the scissors Pivot and the rule from TSA, I just looked it up earlier, guys. From the pivot point to the tip, it cannot be over four inches. So obviously, guys, five and a half inch shears probably are small enough. I can pretty much look at this distance right here and tell that it's only two and a half inches. But if you guys want to be safe, grab your handy dandy tape measure. And I will go ahead and get this up close for you guys so you can see the measurement. So again, guys, we are measuring from the pivot point to the end. We will go ahead and go to, I'm just gonna go on the shortest end of it. I was almost exactly right, guys. It is two and a quarter inches from the pivot to the tip, so we're safe to take our 5.5s. We'll go ahead and throw those in the bag. Now, guys, these are the biggest scissors that I own. These are seven inch fresh shears. I actually don't use them anymore. I let DC use them, but these are gonna be a lot closer, guys. So this actually looks to me as maybe approaching four inches. Again, guys, you can take up to four inches. So definitely double check that before you leave, but let's measure these things and see what they are. All right, guys, so here are our seven inches. We'll go ahead and turn them to a 90 bring it up and you guys can see man I was right again three and a half inches exactly and these are gonna go as well so I don't know about you guys but probably seven or seven and a half is as big of a scissor as any barber is gonna use and if I had to guess these are sevens and they were three and a half then your seven and a half inch scissor would be four inches probably somewhere around that on the blade and those will be okay to take so pretty much all the scissors we're gonna use guys are absolutely gonna be safe and accepted by TSA go ahead and throw those in there now guys obviously Obviously, I know my thinning shears are smaller than my seven inches, so both of these are gonna go no problem. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw my combs and brushes in this front pouch. Not necessarily have to, you know, go anywhere special, but that'll be just fine. We got a clutch enhancement card. We'll go ahead and throw that in there. And we got most of our stuff here. So now guys, the next two topics are the main things that you're gonna get stopped at TSA for. So I'm gonna start off with my razor handle. Now guys, the rule of thumb with a razor handle is you absolutely cannot take it through with a blade in it. So we'll go ahead and just remove the blade. Now we should be good to go. Now the only thing is, they're gonna see this, and you gotta keep in mind guys, TSA agents are not barbers, they don't understand, and to them this looks like still a cutthroat razor. So they're gonna take it out, they're gonna look at it real close, and just make sure that you let them know guys, hey, there's not a blade in it, it is a disposable blade razor, I can take the blades in and out, and this cartridge comes in and out, whatever. Take it out, let them see. Now the, really when they're checking your bag, you're not really supposed to just jump in there and grab things, but once they pull it out, just explain to them that there is no blade in it, and you know, obviously that means you have to get blades wherever you're going. So that is one difficulty we see when we're on the road traveling to hair shows. Matter of fact, every single hair show, somebody is scrambling to another booth to grab some razor blades. There's another thing we're gonna have to grab at the hair show as well that we'll get to in a second. Now guys, this is something I actually haven't tried to travel with yet. This is my feather razor. If you don't know, a feather razor has a guard on it so I cannot cut myself. The sharp part of the blade is underneath the guard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assume guys that this is not gonna be allowed with a blade installed. As much as we know that it's not really sharp, well it's sharp, it'll cut hair, but it has to go through the guard. I know I can't really do any damage with this thing, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that if I was to take this with me, that they're gonna flag me and grab it. Now again, I can take the blade out, so I could either choose to take it out beforehand and go ahead and dispose of it and take it without a blade, and then I'd have to source blades on the road. Now that made me think, guys, if you do get caught with something like this, I've traveled home before with razor blades still in my bag, and you guys aren't gonna get arrested. Nothing like that is going to happen. They're just gonna tell you to throw it away or they're gonna confiscate it, so you would explain to them that the blade comes out. Take the blade out, they can confiscate it, take your feather razor home, and you're just as 
good as normal. You come home, replace the blade. But guys, you're not really gonna get in trouble. Obviously, the only time you would get in trouble is if you kind of got into it with them. You wouldn't let them take it. And then at that point, you gotta decide if you're gonna fly or not. So it's no different than taking your drink through TSA. They're gonna say, sir, you can't bring a drink through. You have to decide if you wanna throw it away, chug it real quick, or you can go back out front and chill and finish your drink or whatever you have, and then go through TSA. So no different here. And the drink thing brings me to our next topic. So two of the biggest things that you cannot take on the road, well, you can take this, guys, but it cannot have liquid in it. The general rule of thumb, guys, is 3.4 ounces on any wet products. Now, I don't really know how broad that goes. I definitely know I cannot take a full can of Cool Care or a full water bottle. Like I just said, guys, you can't take drinks through. And I don't really understand why. I don't know if they think maybe I'm gonna put gasoline in here and make a Molotov cocktail or what's going on, but that is the rule, guys, 3.4 ounces. And these big bottles absolutely cannot travel. So if you guys haven't seen, I actually have a travel water water bottle. Honestly, it doesn't last very long, but it's better than nothing. But I've even bought cheap water bottles from like level three. They got like $6 water bottles at hair shows so that I have a spray bottle. But these are super nice guys. And I believe Stylecraft actually has these on the website. And like I said, you could take the empty big water bottle, but guys, this is just kind of awkward to travel with anyway. So I'll be honest, this whole time I've been traveling, I've just made do. I'll either take a water bottle, have the client go wet their hair in the sink, whatever it is that you gotta do. I'll just leave this at home to make it easy. Now let's move on to hair products, guys. Same exact rules there, 3.4 ounces. So this grooming spray right here is 6.76, and this level three paste is... 5.07, so neither of these are gonna go through. Now I will tell you guys, I've taken toothpaste through before and the tube itself originally, let's say, was five ounces. They checked it, it's only got a little bit left in it and they've let me go through. I don't want you guys to risk it though. If it's over that, don't take it. Like I said, maybe if it's a little bit left, they might let it slide, but if it's a big bottle, they're gonna check it. And if you guys are in a hurry to get through the airport, then you don't really want your bag checked. So I try to follow the rules so I don't get my bag checked. Being that we are barbers though, with some sharp things, a lot of times they are gonna check it. Now, luckily for you guys, your fellas are 245 are smart and the 245 indestructible clay is less than three ounces so I can totally take this whole puck no issue I don't know about some of the other products I guess we can grab them and check them out so the powder says grams on it I'm not gonna go to the trouble of looking at the conversion but uh, this is a pretty small bottle I would imagine that it's okay the no drip is two ounces so you're good to go there and we didn't touch on the compressor guys but the beam team compressor is absolutely allowed to go through as well now the shave gel brings me right back to the point I just made guys the shave gel bottle is nine ounces when it's full I've taken it before with a little bit less than half in there with no issues. But again, guys, you really never know. These are regular people working this job and someone might have a bad day and they're checking everybody. So I just don't risk it. But if I do have like half a bottle of shave gel, I usually take it and I haven't had any issues. All right, guys, that is pretty much it. I got my bag packed up. We're gonna head out to Tampa. I got two vlogs, guys. I'm gonna split the week up. It is a five day course. I'm gonna split the week up into two vlogs. I'll show you guys as much as I can. It's gonna be a dope trip and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that stuff. I got one of the best beard tutorials. Somebody, I don't remember who it is, asked for a beard fade tutorial and I'm telling you guys this is the best beard tutorial on YouTube ever and it's coming out next week so if you're not subscribing for the vlogs subscribe for the beard tutorial and what is coming after that if you guys like this video and it was helpful smash that thumbs up and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about it I appreciate you guys watching as always I'll catch you guys next time